Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome back to the Spinner Rack issue 36. As always, I'm your host, Big B, Brian Adams. And joining me as usual, my co-host. Junior Ruiz, co-host of Comics Remixed. Yeah. Or like how Tony and John referred to me on the past episode of The Lockup. They're like, oh, the boss is here. The boss. I was like, oh, well. You're the boss now. Vince McMahon. Yeah, no. Their you shindig. Could, you could go up in their show and be like evil Vince. I could just be like, hey, I'm taking over. Push Making them, them do lame promos and stuff. Yeah, I could. But I won't. They seem to know what they're doing. Plug for the, the lockup. What's that? A plug. What is it? A plug. Motherfucker, for what? <laughs> hey, I know it's a plug, dude. The lockup. All right, there we go. I said it. <laughs> Which we could find. Well, I wanted you to say it again. Hello. Oh, did you? We're plugging. It's the lockup. Yeah, the lockup what? Wrestling podcast. There you go. Where could they find it? Comicsremix dot com. That's baby. right. I don't know if they're on iTunes yet. They should. No, they're not. No, no iTunes think, yet. I don't think so. Are they going to go to iTunes? We can figure that out for them. Anyway, we're not here to talk about the lockup. That's their thing. That's why we don't talk wrestling anymore. Yeah. So this week on the lovely brand new issue thirty six, we're going to discuss the DC animated features and the one Marvel one. <laughs> that was actually based on comic books. Yes, this is the one arena where DC kicks Marvel's ass completely. Other than uh, TV shows? And TV shows. Yeah, they're TV shows. Until well, the Netflix series, then that might be competition. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of wondering if The Flash might beat into DC Street quite a little bit because I'm not too... But we, yeah, but we, we talked about that. But this is not TV or movies where DC, well, sucks kind the movies. Of. TV is good so far. Movies suck. This is the animated features, which have been pretty damn good for the most part. Yeah. Even the ones that aren't based on comic books have been good. But DC's, I mean, I think DC's more heavily been based on actual material versus Marvel. Where it's more of... has more just like, here you original go. Original stuff. It's like an original story. Yeah. Or a, a twist on an uh, existing story. With, with the exception of Planet Hulk. Yeah. Which was honestly the only one I could find. If anybody knows of another... Marvel animated feature that was based on a comic book story. Let me know. From pretty much from beginning to end. Yeah. Not like the Hulk versus what the uh, Wolverine were. Yeah, no, it's got a couple be of like, things, but it really wasn't. Like Planet Hulk. Obviously, Planet Hulk is based off of the comic Planet Hulk story. Right. You know, it's obvious. Yeah. It can't be like you said, where it's elements borrowed from. No, it's got to be. Yeah, and to my knowledge that I can remember, Planet Hulk is probably the only one. Even though it might not look like it, it might be a sloppy mess. Like Superman Doomsday. They need to do Phoenix Saga. Phoenix Saga? I, you know, I don't know why they don't delve into that. I guess they're making that movie money, so they don't need it. They figure, you know, oh, we've got this much of the pie. We'll let DC have this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which, and not the DC's not shooting themselves in the foot, but anyway. Their animated features rock. Let's do it. Doomsday. Superman. Hated it. Sucked. I gotta give you the Living Color. Hated it. It was terrible. <laughs> it, was. it was bad, man. I hated the artwork, first of all. Like, Superman's cheekbones looked like he'd already been punched before the fight started. Absolutely. I hated it. It was awful. You yeah. know, um, they tried to take... That was an example of them taking elements, but it just didn't work because we all know the death of Superman spawned yeah. the other four. Well, the, And that was part of his return. My whole issue with that movie was I felt like they did that movie as if they were going to do that movie live action. Whereas... People don't know who the hell the Justice League International is. They don't know who Booster Gold or right. Blue Beetle or that there's, you know, the, the Justice different League Green Lanterns or, time. you know, yeah. Fire and Ice. And people don't know these characters. Yeah. So I don't understand. It's an animated feature. Just go for it, man. Yeah. Who gives a shit? You want to do that. That's you want to put characters in there. People yeah, don't know because, because you because don't, don't show them. Exactly. Exactly. If you don't show them, how are they going to know? Come exactly. On. You want to see you got the character, exposure, man. Exposure. You might get interested. Like, oh, I wonder who that yeah. is. Let me go do some more research on him because I've done that millions of times. Oh yeah. You know. Why couldn't they have put that scene in that movie? Why couldn't they have just done the comic book? Which I could say for a lot of these. I think but, it would. You know what? I think it would have worked if they would have took a uh, the Dark Knight Returns approach to it, mm -hmm. the animated version, the way they did it was two separate parts. Mm -hmm. I think it would have worked if they did that. You know. The first half of the first movie movie is the death and everything, and then at the end, it's the creation of the new four, new Superman. Then you get the second movie, which is the second half of the four new Superman and his return. That would have rocked. Yeah, totally. That would have rocked. But I don't think they had that formula. 
Like they knew that you know they could take right. that route with it. By the time that movie came out, because that movie was the first, the first one. one. It was the first one. It was the first one. No, it was the first. The first one was Batman Gotham Knights because that's, I bought that on Blu-ray. I, I, I like, whoa! Finally, you're incorrect, sir. Am I? You are. Suck my ass. It came out in 2008, tied into the Dark Knight. Wow! Oh, you are correct, good sir. Oh, seven was was Doomsday. Ouch. And then they're wrong. Yeah, then the next movie was The New Frontier. You know what? I knew that because I'm very fond of those movies. Well, okay, there you go. There's another one. New Frontier. How was that compared? You know, unfortunately, I have never read New Frontier. Okay. So I couldn't base I it on judgment, but I really I love liked the, it. The artwork was I, great. Obviously, New Frontier, for people that don't know, is like a nod to like the Golden Age into the Silver Age, mm-hmm. like that crossover. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. The Martian Manhunter thing. My fiance didn't know who the Martian Manhunter was. She liked it. She liked the character. I'm like, hey, that's cool. She's kind of interested in the character now. Yeah. Not that I could ever twist her arm enough to read a comic. I get her undead Archie. She's just, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good book. I, I guess little kids will do that to you, though. I sit here and make it make it sound like you have all this free time. It's kind of hard to read comics. When it is. Kids are projectile vomiting on you. I think you don't want to be reading comics when kids are, you know, that's got to protect that shit. Unless you're reading digital, and uh, you just wipe the screen. Yeah. Oh, look, he just blasted my $500 iPad. Uh. Yeah, wipe, you're done. Yeah. As opposed to, oh, damn, I can never find a comic in this condition again for that yeah. shit. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the, the New Frontier thing, man, I don't I don't know. I never read it. He brought up Gotham Knight, and that wasn't... Like, they did do a handful of, like Marvel did, where they're mostly original stories. Uh, Gotham Knight was all tie-in for the Dark Knight movie. Yeah. Wonder Woman was an origin story for Wonder Woman. Was that based on any particular storyline? I'm not sure. Not to my knowledge, but I will say that was probably one of my favorite of all the DC animes that I've seen. The Wonder Woman was an excellent movie. It really was. was. excellent. Actually, Wikipedia. Haha. We're in a Wikipedia fact. Now, this is going to become a spinner rack thing, I think, sometimes. A Wikipedia fact. Okay. I don't know, just because it's easy to use Wikipedia. It's here. Wikipedia says that uh, this storyline was borrowed from George Perez's post-crisis on Infinite Earth's origin. Yeah. From 87. Mm-hmm. Wasn't like... Gods and Mortals. It wasn't verbatim, title. but yeah. Well, yeah, it just said borrowed from. Right, right, right. It was really good, man. I know Carrie Russell, that's the Felicity girl, right? The TV show, not Felicity from Arrow. I know comic book nerds nowadays probably wouldn't remember Felicity, the show from... Was that? That was on the same network as Arrow. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day. But Carrie Russell, anyway, she's Wonder Woman. She didn't bother me. I know a lot of people bitch about her. They'd, pr- they'd rather have the original from Justice League. I can't remember her name. Nah. I hey, Superman is interchangeable. Wonder Woman is interchangeable. The only one that you cannot change is Batman. Dude. Kevin Conroy is Batman. I honestly, yes. I Kevin Conroy is Batman. Yes. You cannot change Batman. Undeniably Kevin. I wish the Dark Knight movies would have been Kevin Conroy. Voice and over. not Peter Weller. Yeah, that would yeah. be awesome if they voiced over. I would buy that shit. They could yeah. charge $100 for it. Move Kevin Conroy edition. I'd be like, ooh. Right, right, right. Snatch that right up. But, uh, and then, you know, Public Enemies, the Batman Superman movie. Which, unfortunately, like, I, I do find it kind of... I did not watch that one. I guess, let's just slap Marvel out of the way real quick. Since, apparently, we're just going to talk about all these movies. I don't remember a whole lot of them. Iron Man, Doctor Dr. Strange, Strange. Next Avengers. Thor. Final Hulk versus Thor, Son of Asgard, or whatever it was. I didn't really particularly like any of them. I liked Doctor Strange. I didn't even like Planet Hulk, and I love that storyline. It's one of my favorite Hulk storylines. There were just too many changes in it. Actually, now that I think about it, I feel like, didn't they put Beta Ray Bill in Planet Hulk in the movie? Do you yeah. recall? Yeah. They did? He was, instead they of the have, Silver he didn't Surfer? Have any speaking lines. Yeah, it was Beta Ray Bill instead of Silver Surfer. That's cool. I like Beta Ray Bill, but still, I thought the movie sucked. I thought it was nothing compared to the storyline. It was one of those bad, just bad transitions where like with DC and Superman Batman Public Enemies there were a couple differences I think I can't remember if Batman in one of the other Batman sacrifices himself or he doesn't in the other one it's 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 I think one he like dies but doesn't really die in that one that shit doesn't happen at all I can't remember which it is there's a couple other different instances some of the cronies are changed which is something I think DC likes to do with all these movies you know like, no Aquaman and their latest movie, Justice League War. Yeah, I didn't understand that. Why Shazam? Why another Superman-level character? Yeah, totally. What's the Unless point? they've got some huge push that they're trying to go for, but 
Or they just thought Aquaman wasn't smart, uh, cool enough. I don't know. That was like, why did Cyborg have to be in the Justice League and be in the Flashpoint when he wasn't in the Justice League? Right, right. Have to be in the Flashpoint. Who, who was his replacement? Who did he replace? I don't Do you really know? remember now. But, you know, Cyborg has such a prominent role in Flashpoint as it is. Yeah. That was another, I mean, see, that's the thing. Marvel needs to pick up what DC's doing if they want to have successful animated movies, which I don't think they do. Mm-hmm. It looks to me like they're sticking strictly to television shows. You gotta, I mean, obviously, the, your, your format. These movies aren't an hour, aren't 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. I mean, Batman's, were the Batman's 90 minutes, both of them? The animated? Yeah, the uh, Dark Knight ones. One, just two. about, just about an hour and 20. So, I mean, those are a little longer, but most of these were under two hours. Yeah. Some of them were only like 75 minutes, you know? Yeah. You didn't get a lot of 90 minute ones. And that's a lot, like a, a very uh, short amount of time to try and squish all that into. So I guess, I, but I don't understand like the, the character changes, like the why the Shazam and the Aquaman. Right. When you're going to do an Aquaman movie next also. Why not show Aquaman to get people excited for the fact that there's going to be an Aquaman next? For those of you out there... Um let us know what you guys think. If you've heard anything about why these companies are changing characters around like that in the movies, let us know because we sure shit don't. Yeah, no clue. I don't. I don't understand the appeal. I don't understand why they did a new Fifty Two movie. I know I'm jumping on the most recent one. Why in War would they change Wonder Woman's costume again? Like they just changed oh, the like Fifty Two. Yeah. Why would yeah they add like the weird the, like the, dark the blue sleeves? That was um. Come on. You remember when uh, who was doing this? And I would have done with the pants, by the way. If the, when they launched Wonder Woman in the new Fifty Two and she'd have had the fucking pants, I don't know I'd have been cool did. with it. They did it when Wonder Woman hit issue six hundred. Remember yeah. a couple years ago, and Donna Troy was Wonder Woman. Yeah, that totally. was her outfit. It worked. There's just sometimes you can tweak it, and fans won't get mad because it works. Yeah, it makes I, sense. I thought it was excellent. Some reason were like, oh, yeah. But why? Why change it again? Why not just leave Wonder Woman alone? I don't know. And why has there only been one Wonder Woman movie? I wish I had the answers, dude. There could be more. Alas, I do not. But, you know, then you get, uh... Yeah. I, I forgot what I was going to say now. Brain fart. Yeah. It's just the, the quality of the movies is really good. And my only gripe with all of them is just the slight tweaks. Except for Doomsday. Doomsday was fucking just awful, man. They should have had those... The, all those characters in there to stop being bitches. Give us more than Batman and Superman. Right. Which is why this entire list is pretty much comprised of Batman and Superman. Did you see, uh... I mean, Gotham Knights I'm going to bring back the Gotham Knights even though it wasn't based off of any material it was all tie-ins to the movies there, it was a lot of mini movies I thought it was really good right I mean they could, and it even explained some of the stuff you saw in the movie so it was a good tie-in it was kind of like the, it was some of the guys that did the Matrix didn't they you remember the, the, the little Matrix movie the anime, yeah, 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 and the yeah, Animatrix yeah, yeah. yeah Animatrix which I thought was a good for bringing you into that next movie, even though the next one was complete shit. Yeah. But no, Dark Knight was good. Wonder Woman, fantastic. Green Lantern, First Flight. Man, like, I really wanted a lot more of that. It's basically your Green Lantern origin story. I don't believe it's adapted from anything specifically. Right. Just an origin story. Uh, it was all right. I mean, it could have been a little more. I felt like they took too slow of a time with the story and wasting time with... I just wanted more. They could have done, like, a classic origin and made it more, I don't know, grandiose, maybe. Mm -hmm. Them chasing around sleazy dudes in, you know, shitty little dive bars just kind of sucked. No, I agree. It was like, eh, could give me more than that. Public Enemy is awesome. Crisis on Two Earths, obviously, this is based off of Earth 2. Right. JLA Earth 2. Messed up that picture. He's cold, giving us my head. Nice. They're like, once the top, always the top. <laughs> Give us some bro do head. I didn't really care for the crisis on two earths. It was meh. I don't like, um, I got well, I James Woods. That's it. James Woods did Owl Man. I didn't like it. I don't think I ever read that Earth 2 either. But I would definitely like to see a Forever Evil. That would be a sweet animated feature. You think Bull. so? Oh, yeah. I think it would kill Crisis on two earths. There's a lot of, uh, um, uh, good storylines I think would make great animated features what they doing probably not yeah no but what we've got have been like just been fantastic yeah Superman Batman Apocalypse was good which didn't was watch that no you didn't see it mm-hmm. oh come on you got Tim Daly and Kevin Conroy back and I think it's, it's, I believe it's Susan Eisenberg that voiced uh, Wonder Woman yeah on the Justice League cartoons on the animated yeah. cartoons okay mm-hmm. well obviously they're animated obviously 
So, I mean, those three coming back and reprising roles, that was cool. I really dug that. Under the Red Hood was okay, but I didn't like how they tied in. And I understand that Jason Todd coming back is tied in with Ra's al Ghul, but, like, they set it up as Ra's al Ghul hired the Joker to lure Robin out there, Jason Todd, but he didn't intend for him to get killed. Yeah. Why not just leave it as the Joker's a crazy fuck and dragged him out there and killed him? Come on. We all know that's what happened. That's way better. I mean, there's no reason to tie... Ross is already tied deeply into the fucking roots of Batman. Right. That him digging up the fucking... His dead protege's body and throwing him in a Lazarus pit just is some evil shit to do. Isn't it? That's what your arch nemesis does. Yeah. We don't need any fucking... What is the exposition? You don't need a setup on that. Just fucking leave it alone. And I didn't like the Joker's voice in Red Hood either. Although no, MPH's Nightwing didn't bother me. No. Terrible fucking voice. I think it was... Joe DiMaggio or DiMaggio or something. Like, wasn't that a baseball player? That's what I thought when I saw his name in the credits. Yeah. DiMaggio. Okay. Terrible Joker, man. Yeah, no, there's only one Joker as well. Didn't like him at all, man. Yeah, there's... there truly Joker voice, I, I could say. Well, we all know... Mark Hamill got that shit on lockdown. Yeah, he does. He just does. But, uh, I mean, I like the fact that they... For the Justice League movies, they tend to go back to those, those regulars. Yeah. It would be nice to see Hamill do another... Another movie. I'm not sure what they could do. It would be great for them to do anything. There's all kinds of... Uh, wasn't Black Glove ultimately in the end the Joker was the big bad of Black Glove mm-hmm. storyline? Mm-hmm. They could do that. They could do the Killing Joke. That would be sweet. Oh, that'd be something crazy. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, All-Star Superman was good. Um, I didn't like that one. No, you didn't like the movie? No, I didn't. It was just crammed too much too fast, I think. Yeah. And not enough. Okay. Of what I felt like the real, like actually sitting down and reading the comic. Yeah. It just, the story wasn't quite the same. I mean, obviously time constraints and stuff, but they missed like the key and important things that most of these movies that right. were based off of comics nail. So that was that was a swing and a miss, dude. Right, right, right. And then year one, I thought was excellent. I actually think I liked Batman year one better than the comic. Mm-hmm. If that's possible. Mm, it was alright. I mean, that was a total Jim Gordon movie. Yeah, totally. You know, so unless you go in there knowing it's a, supposed to be a Jim Gordon movie, you probably won't like it. I didn't know that. I don't remember. I read Batman Year One probably 15 years ago. That was a mixture. That and I only comic, read it I once. Believe, was a mixture of 50% Batman, 50% Gordon. Yeah. But that animated feature was like... It was like heavily more Gordon than oh, yeah. Batman. Yep. Yeah, that's why I was like, what the f-? But it was good, man. I really enjoyed it. I was, like, quite surprised. Mm-hmm. It's good shit. It was good stuff. Justice League Doom. Um, Did I watch that one? Justice League Doom. Yeah, that's the one where it had Batman on the cover with the Batarang. Yeah. I watched it. It was all right. It was all right. Big changes from Tower of Babel. Mm-hmm. Tower of Babel is probably one of my favorite Justice League story arcs. Yeah. Especially considering it's, like, uh, really some of the ground elements for Identity Crisis, which is another one of my favorite DC storylines. Babel was awesome, man. Again, though, I, I feel like there were characters, they totally changed up the characters. I did appreciate the fact they brought the original Justice League cast back yeah. to reprise all their roles, which was awesome. I really like Nathan Philly in the Screen Lantern. I'm, I'm starting to feel like that guy has earned, he's put his mark on that character animated. I think he should be the go-to guy. Okay. He should be the Kevin Conroy of Green Lantern. Yeah, he should be the Kevin Conroy of Green Lantern. If they ever bring back Green Lantern of the animated series, they should get rid of that guy that was voiced in Green Lantern and give that shit to Nathan Fillion because he is the voice of Green Lantern. Now, here's, here's kind of like a, a off-subject question, but off kind of not off-subject. Mm-hmm. How did you feel? I don't remember his name. Did you watch Beast Wars? I did. Okay. I don't remember a the whole original, lot of it, but I like Well, the voice of Optimus mm-hmm. was not Peter Cullen. And it was the same guy who went on to voice Optimus in later incarnations of Transformers cartoons as well. My question for Transformers fans, since we're on the voice or like, do you think it was, you know, a horrible change and, you know, you don't want nobody but Peter Cullen or do you think it was all right? In my opinion, they were almost similar. They're, they're the same voice, but Peter Cullen has a more deeper voice. Yeah. I, but to me, I like, I thought it was great. I honestly don't think I had a problem with that. At all. I thought it was a really weird take on Transformers. I was 
a teenager by the time that was out. Yeah. So that's why I said I really didn't like follow it. I jumped in at the last moment. Like yeah. The last few episodes. Oh, I, like, I see. Oh, I saw it right at the beginning. Because I, that's when I found out that it was um, a continuation of the Generation 1 universe. Because when it first came out, I was like, what the fuck is this crap? And it was like, it's a sorry attempt to a, a re, uh, relaunch Transformers, so I didn't bother with it. And one day I watched a few minutes of it, and they're like, oh, Optimus Primal. I was like, wait. Is it like is this transform? What is this exactly? So I did a little research on it. And when I found out that it tied into the G one yeah, universe, totally. I was like, I gotta watch this, and I watched it, and I was hooked. And then Beast Machines happened. Yeah, that's that's kind of what got me. I watched the show when it first came out because you know, I mean, I've got a brother that's like probably close to your age. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And uh, he was into that, and uh, you know, so he just watched stuff. So when they started tying in the G one stuff, I was like, oh man, this is this is pretty cool. Yeah. That's you know, hook right there, nostalgia gets you in. But uh, I don't, the voice thing, it, it really depends, man. Some of the pieces, it doesn't bother me. Even with Batman, it's sometimes I'm like, man, I wish Conroy was, did this. Because there's a a couple Batman movies, man, where... I don't like when they make Batman sound way too young. Like, Batman, to me, should have that, I don't necessarily Kevin Conroy voice, but Kevin Conroy's voice as Batman gives it, like, seasoning. It makes him yeah. seem like he's not a rookie and he's experienced, you know? Got a little gruff to it. Yeah, exactly. That, I can handle a different voice actor as long as they remember that you got to put some gruff into yeah. it. Yeah, not it's, a, it's, not uh, those rookies out here that just fucking, you know, they're popping pimples still and just came off they're sucking on their mummy's teeth. Now, I think there's, now there's a lot of change-ups for, for Doom on their villains, too, though, wasn't there? I Compared so. to Bible, I believe there's a lot of villain changes on that. I don't remember it being, you know what, it wasn't Vandal Savage. It was Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul stole Batman's bodies, and Batman was pretty much out of it, like, the entire time. Yeah. Which, I don't remember it being like that. I remember his parents' bodies, and I think it's attacked by Bane. And I don't, I don't remember Bane being a part of that initial, the, the story arc. Yeah. Uh, so there was a lot of changes there, but I liked it. It was cool. Mm. I don't think Martian Manhunter was, or was Martian Manhunter? I don't remember. In Tower of Babel? Yeah. Yeah, because that's when they, I think... They uh, reestablished it, like, fire and all this other shit, I think. I'm not sure. But I know Martian was in it. Because wasn't he the one that really read Batman's thoughts and figured out that Batman really did have these contingency plans? Oh, you know, that's that sucks because I'm going to have to go out now and... Uh, Torrent it? I'm going to have to reread it. No, I'll just dig it. It's under the bed. Oh, okay. Just walk right, out right, of the right. hall, pull it out of the box. Oh, and actually, I've got the graphic top on the shelf even easier. There you go. Whew. But that read a long time. I don't believe Martian Manhunter's villain was the same. So it, was, it was stuff like that. Uh, Mirror Master was not in it. No. Star Sapphire, I don't think it was in it. I think the majority of the the uh, Injustice League or whatever they call it. Or, they weren't the Injustice League. Were they? What the hell were they no. called themselves? Legion of Doom. Mm-hmm. I don't think they were all the same. Nah. I think they took a lot, a lot of liberties with that one. Yeah. But still, all in all, good movies. And uh, we're going to continue this conversation next week in 37. 37. 37? Try not to suck any on the way to the parking lot. Bam. That's how we end this. We're going to end it with a clerk's reference. Yeah, no. That's how we roll. Peace. Peace.